Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a quick 10 minute tutorials. Today I'm doing a nice fun OSINT project. So this is a tool called Metagoo Fill. If you've never used it, you're gonna enjoy this. So hopefully you guys like this content. If you do, hit that sub button, hit that like button. It helps out the channel a ton and helps us get to more eyes. Also, if you guys wanna support the channel and get your own merch, like a little tumbler or shirt and things like that, the link is in the description. It's a Printify link. Um, it's going to be a limited time release, so check it out. And then also, if you want to support the channel in any way and get some more exclusive content and early access, check out the Patreon below. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So first things first, if you've never heard of Metagoo Phil, um, it's kind of changed over the years. So it used to be a, a I don't want to say more um, useful tool because it's still very, very useful. It saves a lot of time. It's, it automates a lot of things, but it used to do more. And um, we'll talk about that. So firstly, what does it do? It actually will reach out to websites and whatever domain you tell it, and it will do the Google dorking for you. So what it's going to do is it's going to look for all of a specific type of file. So if you say, I want all the PDF files, which is what we're going to do here for try hack me, it will download the PDF files that it finds. So this is really useful, very useful, because what you'll see is that we can actually download files found and then from there we can extract information. So we'll see, we'll use Metagoo Fill, spelled just like that. If you wanna, um, I'll put the GitHub pay or link in the description as well. If you wanna install it, super easy. And then you can see it's a pretty easy tool to use. So we say Metagoo Fill, we say tack D for domain. The domain we're gonna use is tryhackme.com. And then we're gonna say, okay, we want, you can see it says in download file limit. Well, we don't wanna make it, I don't wanna download every file that's ever invented um, on Try Hack Me. So I'm just gonna say, we'll just do 10, okay? We wanna do 10. Um, and this is just gonna help us out a little bit with only downloading 10 files. We don't want any more than that, if there even is 10 files, but it's not gonna download any more than that. Um, one nice thing you can do here is then you're gonna say tack T for file types. And we're gonna say we want PDF files, right? That's what we want right now. We want file. We want PDF files. And then it says here save directory, and we're gonna say try hack me. We want to save it in the try hack me directory so we don't get confused. Now you could put user agent here, and if a website is expecting certain user agents or something like that, or if um, maybe you don't want them to know that Metagoo Phil is the one researching whatever the case may be, you can change the user agent, but. All right, we'll go ahead and hit enter and you'll see it'll start searching. And you see it says downloading, searching for 100 files and then waiting 30 seconds between searches. So it searches, downloads, redoes it, right? It does this to save time or to save the um, bandwidth because as you know, if you ever use Google and done a bunch of searches real fast, it usually will stop you and make you do CAPTCHAs and all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and wait for it and once it downloads it'll you'll see it'll save all these documents for us and it'll save them in our try hack me directory which we can then easily go search so if we're doing an investigation or something we can actually store these over to the side now when i said earlier that metagoo Phil used to do more it used to actually print out a report with um a lot of different metadata for the files so this really that was really handy it would kind of give you like all the metadata in the files um, they, if you go to their GitHub now, it says right on there that they had like a, um, basically a, uh, business decision to change that. Right. So that's fine. They changed it. And now they, they tell you how to use EXIF tool and stuff like that. So you can see it downloaded. It looks like we got one, two, three, four. We actually got five. Okay. So there wasn't 10. So we say LS. Okay. So we've got some pretty cool PDFs. So like the snort cheat sheet, let's try that one. So first thing we're gonna do is use the thorough. That's just a PDF find, uh, reader on Linux. Okay, so we open it and look at that. It's a little snort um, breakdown or a little snort cheat sheet. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we didn't, I didn't even know they had that. Um, let's try and do um, T3 virus total. Let's do Zathura or actually let's do the check wreath. What's this? Check Nate, okay. Wreath network internal pen test. Uh-oh, what's this? So if you see, this is a pen test report. I don't know that this is real. This is probably something, um, you know, but this would be really bad because look, they're giving us a list. Look at this, I, I know I made it very small. Um, I'd never looked at this before. You can see they're saying there's Thomas's user account was found reusing a password. So 
we just by doing a quick little PDF search, we already are noticing that we can probably use Thomas's password to get in. Now, this is obviously intentional to find. I'm going to assume this is part of one of the boxes they have or something. Um, but you can see we can actually go through and find, oh, look, they have unquoted service path. We just got the keys to the kingdom. They, we got their pen test report, right? Now, like I said, this is probably not their real pen test report. Um, I would just assume that. But you can see they have a nice little diagram, which also gives us internal IPs. They've got us all kinds of stuff. Um, Thomas Reith's public facing web server. Yeah, so it's not a real one. It's probably based on the, um, the oh, there it is, the room wreath. But you can see if we did this on a real one, we would have keys of the kingdom right here. So that's really cool. That's really nice. So what else can we do? Well, we can also use something like EXIF tool to try and get the metadata out of it, right? Because if this is uploaded to a company website or something like that, most companies, TriHackMe is obviously a cybersecurity company, so they're going to filter for this stuff. But most companies don't realize they have this stuff sitting out there. So here we go ahead and look, and looks like we have um, producer's name is Typora. That could be a username. Um, okay, cool. So looks like we have the date, and obviously that's the last date modified because we downloaded it. Um, but it was created in 2021, okay. So let's try, instead of that one, let's do it on the Snort one. Exit tool, oh interesting, the producer's name is I Love PDF, which is obviously not true. Um, that's probably not the real name, so they actually have a little um, Easter egg, if you will, in there. So you can see, we can start gathering data very quickly um, just by doing this. So what we could do here is we could actually script this, where we say, hey, run Metagoofill, and then as soon as it's done, any of the um, documents that it finds, any of these listings, go ahead and run EXIF tool on it and save that all as a separate report. So we actually have a really cool um, system here. So let's check the EXIF tool on the other ones. APT. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Doesn't look like we're gonna get a bunch of stuff, but we do have an actual GitHub page you see. Um, so we could kind of, now we have a little bit of a hint. The creator is try hack me so that could be a user account so you can see pretty quickly that we're starting to get some good data um obviously like i said this is a try hack me is made to do this so what i mean by that is these are parts of boxes that you're supposed to find this information so it's not surprising that they've changed the creator the creator's name is not try hack me it's a website name obviously um but if you did this out of real company you would find that this stuff is pretty it's pretty much a gold mine um because what if the creator's name is a username that you didn't know about now you've got username enumeration right and then let's say that username is bob dot i don't know bob dot schmo right well now you know the username format so now you can guess anyone that works at that company and guess it's their first dot last name et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. you can keep doing this so you can see how this would really come in handy so Hopefully this helps you guys. This is a quick, quick, quick tutorial because it's as simple as running Metagoofill and we'll go back and show you. Running it with the domain name and then the number of downloads you want, the type of file you want. So if you don't want a PDF, if you want to search for docs, XLS files, whatever else, you can do that. And then where you want to save it. It's that simple. It's that easy. And it's going to download it for you. Now you could go do this on Google Dork yourself. Yeah, but you can run this and let it run and you could say, I want to search for all kinds of files, and you know the domain's going to come back with a bunch. You could run this, go do something else, it'll be finished, and then you can go through and actually run EXIF tool on all of them. And you can see if you go through here, you can actually run EXIF tool, tack R for recurse, and then say we want all PDF files, right? And then we'll get the data for all of it. You can see we're, we don't have to sit there and actually do it one at a time. We can look for all of it. And then if we say, okay, we want that, but we only want to grep for the creator, right? We only want to grep for creator because that's all we care about is the creator. Well, now look, now we have try hack me, Typora. Now we know what um, Fire or what Mozilla Firefox they're using, Adobe Illustrator. They're using tools. We now have the creator versions. Now we actually have the um, tools they're using in the environment. I mean, all of this is a goldmine of information simply 
from a quick, quick, quick run. So hopefully this helps you guys. This is a quick little OSINT tutorial, a lot of fun. I think you should, everyone should throw this into their repertoire um, and just kind of have fun with it. Check it out. It's all open source information, but keep in mind, when you're reaching out and downloading these files, you are touching the systems. So just keep that in mind that you are actually touching their systems. So hopefully you guys have a great day and thanks a lot.